Meatco was until recently limping financially, to the point of neglecting its main reason for existence, namely producers, some who had begun deserting it, setting up a new outfit to rival Meatco. In the financial year 2020 to 2021, Meatco made a loss of over $200 million. Its financial situation has seen its assets attached by creditor banks. It was recently offered a lifeline, though, by government, a financial injection of over $200 million from the Development Bank of Namibia to be settled by the state. As a result, the company has managed to free all its assets and return these to under its ownership. It is now focused on returning to profitability. We had historical debts as Midco. Now, these debts, they were taken many years ago. We were owing Bank Venduk 94 million. Two years ago, we were owing First National Bank 520 million. We have paid off Bank Venduk. We don't owe them anything. These were debts that were taken around 2011. We were owing FNB 520 million. We have paid off that debt. There was also a debt that Midco had with DBN. So we still owe DBN at this stage around 400 million. Our assets that were attached to the abattoir, the feedlots, the building you are seeing here, our stocks and our data, the securities to the banks, they are free now. Other strategies considered are market diversification, maximizing returns and improving revenues through concentrating on key premium markets in Norway, China and the USA. Towards improving relations with local farmers, Midco has returned to paying competitive prices. Another positive development is that meat from north of the red line can now be exported with new markets considered in Ghana, Tanzania, Angola and the Democratic Republic of Congo. That means farmers from the northern communal area can now earn an income. We have so far spent around 12 million that we have paid farmers in the northern of the communal area. So they are happy now. The elders can now retire knowing that I'm always happy here when I'm paying farmers and I see a grown-up farmer receiving 50,000, 60,000. They are able to have access to health care. They are able to send their children to school. That's their source of income and source of livelihood. That's the reason why we have to create those markets. Life is now much more better in the NCA than it was before. That's the role of Midco. So we have developed new markets and we are busy sending containers as we speak. Angola spends annually 9 billion US dollars in importing beef from Europe. And they are saying, why should we be importing beef from Europe when we can actually buy beef from the Oshakati Abattoir that crosses through Osh Oshkango within a day? And discussions are at an advanced stage to penetrate markets in the Middle East, considered more lucrative and competitive than elsewhere in the world. A major challenge for the corporation is price disparity between meat from the north and south of the country. Farmers from the south currently earn $62 per kilogram, while those from the north pocket only $36 per kilo. Meatco is also working on mainstreaming the northern communal area into the economy, to which the Ministry of Agriculture has directed the company to operate abattoirs in Katima Melilu, Rundu and Elulo, and to provide technical support to the Oshakati abattoir. The Rundu abattoir is nearing completion and is expected to be finalized during the first quarter of 2023.